and we have many other different invariants as well. So in overall, we have considered about different choices, different design and the alternatives to the design your own GNNs. We have many other variants right now, GNN variants, I mean. So one thing they, uh, the, the design space paper missed is to consider the multi-hub information for the GNN. So why multi-hub GNN? You may wonder the stacking over multiple uh, GNN layers is able to uh, utilize multi-hub information and why we still think they haven't figured out the multi-hub information completely. So uh, this gives you the, the example. So in this case, when we uh, consider the direct neighbor, we directly utilize the connected the node and it helps to decide the representation of A1 and A2. And when they are very similar, it helps. But in this case, A1 and A2 are connected to the the different class tables, B1, B2, B3, B4. When we just consider the first hub neighbors in the, the final up, output representation is likely to have uh, the, the B wise, the B like representation because it is connected to all the the, the white node, right? W2 is also the same, but they are actually different. They have different label, but they are connected to the other white nodes. So it is impossible to get the better representation when we have just one layer GNN. So that's why multi-hop information is, is important and useful, but Stacking multiple layers is difficult to utilize, directly utilize the multi-hub information because they are, the, the information is propagated from drag neighbors all the time and difficult to um, consider the, the distant neighbors or this structural, these example like a structural information. So the end just in addressed the the problem. So they they proposed another just ends with the. different adjacency information. So we have A, A square, and A to the K information. So before we get the, so here, let me clarify. So from the A, we have the A square. Right from the A, so we have for the A zero and A two, we have B one and B two, B three, B four, and B one and B two, B three and B four. This is A. Um, for the A square.
when we uh, compute a square from this, and a1 has a2 neighbor, and b1 has b1 has b2 and b2 and b3 and b4 neighbor. So that's why I said a and a square has different adjacency information when we, we directly utilize those information in the using the GC, GCN aggregation we may we expect better performance so we compute the a and a square and a k and we feed those information to the the GCNs and utilize their output at the same time we can get final representation of the the nodes to combine those three information uh, three outputs we just use concatenation or we use some layer. So the result wise for the node classification task compared to the GCN, it is slightly better. And another advanced version of the in GCN, which is called mix hop. They started with the uh, the exactly same the idea with the in GCN. And actually, the first author is the same the person. So we have the single GCN layer. This is this is also called the vanilla GCN, and we have uh, the mix the multi hot version of the GCN. We employ the different power of the adjacency, we combine those, we get the final representation. Uh, different from the end just in paper, they explored its theoretical property and they focused on that, for example, when they, uh, so in this, in this, the mix hop, GCN layer, it is capable of representing two hop delta operator. So they thought delta op operator means it is able to get the difference. That's what it is called delta. So they assumed that and proved and showed that uh, this mix hop layer is able to find the difference with respect to the uh, the different adjacency. So that is their uh, contribution. So they proved that vanilla GCN is not capable of represent the, the two hop delta operator, and this mix hop is able to represent two hop delta operator. So when is it useful? I by giving you the the example, uh, the figures. So I uh, gave you the simple example. So this is uh, you may wonder. Uh, the the author uh, indicated that the delta operator allow a model to represent the users that live around the boundary of the social circle. So, which means that, uh, for example, American person, he has some American friend, and, and the A has a, a German friend, and this guy is a very popular and active guy an outgoing person and so many German friends. So
So A is the boundary person. So it, the, the A is connecting the American society, American group, and German group. So the delta operator helps to find the representation of the A in this case because it is able to get the, the difference, right? Difference means when, when this consider just the, the direct neighbor and it is likely, it is connected to the Americans, right? But we, it, when it considers uh, second half neighbors, they ha it has more G's than A, right? So the difference is uh, the different the different information difference the delta the delta information is different from the the delta of the other nodes. They insist that this mixed hop Chishian layer is able to approximate. The, the the information. So, in at the same time, they also introduced the mixing coefficient. So, when we combine uh, these, we can also assign the mixing coefficient. Right, alpha one, alpha two. So this is it, another trainable variable, and uh, they achieved that uh, these are the the version of the of this this one. So they are able to get the the best performance compared to the the others, and they also showed that the delta operator is also related to the homophily. So homophily means that, so the concept of homophily is originated from the, the sociology. So in, in, in that field, the homophily means that the similar individuals becoming friends due to the they are becoming friends due to their higher, high similarity. So, for example, two magicians are more likely to be friends. So this is the, the, the most common assumptions in social network because you, you guys are similar and you have friends, and it's the one aspect, right? When you are in the same lab or and you have, so you communicate more with your uh, close friend. I, I expect you guys have similar hobby or similar personality in something like that. So that is called homophily. And when some data has higher homophily in the GAT, in vanilla GCN and works very well, but it has low similarity, low homophily, I'm sorry, low homophily in mixed hop works better and difference between, particularly between GAT and their difference is getting higher. In this is also one of the important analysis. So overall for the NGC and, and the mix hub in when we consider this this the, the multi hub information for your own GNN layers, you have to 
careful, you have to be careful about the time complexity because to compute the, the a to the two uh, second, a to the third, fourth, in and the space uses the certainly increases a lot and at the same time is a very time consuming task so uh, when we consider the multi hop information we usually compare these we can implement in two different ways right we compute the a3 first and multiply by the h and we compute the ah first and multiply a and a and sequentially so let's compare two different cases when we proceed with this and it is happy to compute this and quickly converge to uh, the the output of this is into the the full dense matrix. So it is a very time-consuming task. And when we compute something from this and this and this, it takes uh, better. It is more efficient in the tank complexity. It corresponds to big of the K max and M and S. K max is the the maximum of the multi step multi hop, and M is the number of non-zero entities, and S is the dimension of the H. So when we use a sparse matrix multiplication, in it is very expensive, efficient. But in this case. Uh, it's difficult to use sparse matrix. We don't have benefit from the sparse matrix multiplication because A3 is already a very dense matrix. So another way to avoid the heavy computation for the A to the K is to use the, the sampling and mini batch technique. For the mini batch learning, uh, many previous work was works were proposed. Uh, compared to the the naive uh, I'm sorry, so the exact sample exact sampling is means that we don't sample neighbors and consider all the neighbors and this is a very um, time consuming and inefficient task so that's how we can sample neighbors when we aggregate neighbor what is a naive way to sample the neighbors so for example this is the input to decide uh, this node's representation instead of instead of compute the considering the, all the possible neighbors we choose just two and decide representation and another layer instead of all we com we consider these two and decide representation and we uniformly sample neighbor and these are naive sampling this is used in the graph stage and another way to sample neighbor is the layer wise important sampling so depending on the node importance node importance could be from the node degree right so when you have more neighbors and you are likely to be more important so using the importance score sample neighbors and you expect better um, better and efficient output and these are uh, one of the sampling techniques to to reduce the variance when you sample neighbors so try to minimize the variance 
and when you sample neighbors and they use the control variant and um, we don't have enough time to cover all the details and let me leave this for your the reading assignment and for the important sampling so so this paper so this sim this is simple and i quickly explain what that means and we assume that the importance distribution is from the a square so this is the a matrix so degree normalized adjacency and we get the column wise information this is u and we get this and for the importance of the node u we compute this so this is the the l genome we compute the l genome we can we get some probability right and by looking at uh, the importance uh, the importance score for this l genome and um, using the score for the probability and we sample node from the the score which means when it has um, more neighbors in this squared matrix and and is likely to be sampled at this stage and the sample nodes are considered for the neighbors to decide the representation of the node v for the next layer not just a sum the neighbors representation they it is normalized using the actual importance of the 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 node so that is the key idea of the fast gcn just sample from the importance distribution and and collect the aggregation score and that is the key idea of the fast gcn layer wise importance sampling All right. So the result wise surprisingly so so this is the I'm trying to talk about the the largest data set in the paper. It is composed of the two hundred thirty two thousand vertices in at just so many edges. So it is impossible to run with the regional GCN. By having the approach this is second so 2.7 seconds it is able to compute the result of the core and when you when we see the reddit paper reddit result it was impossible but it was able to get with this amount of time and for the sample size by considering just 100 neighbors and they were able to achieve this efficiency and accuracy wise the this red one mean shows the result of the fast GCN he getting similar result with the the, P, the GCN and graph sage papers so so that is just the the output and we have talked about the recent advance about the graph neural networks in the following week, we will cover uh, some theoretical aspect in the graph neural networks, so which is related to the your previous reading assignment. And thank you for your attention, and have a good weekend. Thank you.